So we're left with this question of what is this exponential for matrices good for? I mean, it seems like a very complicated thing to calculate for matrices, though made a little bit easier because we can do stuff with eigenvalues. But why do we care about it? Well, we're going to go back to differential equations. So, so our ODEs that we were looking at before. We want to solve the initial value problem y prime is equal to a y where y of 0 is some vector y y sub 0 so remember here a is an n by n matrix y is an n by 1 column vector of functions y of 0 means that we're plugging 0 into each of those functions and we get a, a collection of results that we're going to put into the column vector y 0 we used eigenvalues and eigenvectors to solve this in the previous section, but we can actually do this using the matrix ex exponential. The solution here can very simply be written as y is equal to e to the t a. So here, this is the matrix a times the variable t, and then the exponential of that matrix times the column vector y0. That's that's uh, simply our solution using the exponential the matrix exponential. If a is diagonalizable, this this turns out to be exactly the same solution that we had before. And it'll be basically the same kind of work to solve it because finding the exponential just involves finding the eigenvalues, the eigenvectors turn that into a matrix product and working it out. And so really the advantage of, of doing it this way is that you can actually avoid the step of of having to solve for your initial value part later on. Though it does mean that you do need to find the inverse of the, the x that you'll that we'll get in our formula. So whether or not this saves us more any work or not is maybe debatable but the the difference here is that this solution doesn't care if a is defective our methods from section 6.2 do not work for defective matrices but we can take the exponential of, of defective matrices so we'll look at at least one example where of of that where we actually can solve a system of equations or solve an initial value problem that we couldn't have in 6.2 6 using the exponential. But we'll also look at some examples of ones where where we could do it before and just show that this does does work pretty similarly. So let's do this initial value problem. So here we have two functions y1 y2 this is a 2 by 2 system again we we just identify what are the matrices oops that should have been y sub 1 I messed up there oh well but here our matrix a is negative 2 negative 1 6 3 go ahead and take our initial values this this y y not is equal to 2 1 and we want to go ahead and figure this all, all out. Now, I'm going to actually save us some time here and note that I did pick this specifically so that this matrix A is the ex is the matrix that we already found the exponential of in the previous video. We found here this was this came from problem 31A, I believe. The D in this case was 0, 0, 0, 1. Our x was negative 1, negative 1, 2, 3. And our x inverse was negative 3, negative 1, 2, 1. Now, I could go ahead and write out what the e to the a is for this, but we, we're not actually looking for e to the a. We're looking for e to the t a. So th this t means that we do need to actually do this multiplication again. 
e to the ta is going to be the matrix x times e to the td so maybe I, maybe I should write this out for us so we'll go ahead and actually write out what we have so this should be x times e to the td x inverse Basically, that this just comes from the fact that T A is equal to X T D X inverse. The 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 variable T can just be moved inside of that. So we write that all out. We have our matrix X. We'll come back to E to the T D in a moment, but we'll go ahead and write our our X inverse. And now we have to think about what is this particular exponential. Well, remember that TD, we're just multiplying everything in this matrix by T. That means since everything off the diagonal are zero anyways, we're multiplying our diagonal elements by, by T. Of course, we also have a zero here, so that's a zero. This becomes a T, but we then take E to the zero and E to the T. Or in other words, we have one here and we have E to the T here. We multiply this whole thing out. We're going to multiply the second two first. And remember, just like before, this is actually an elementary matrix that multiplies the second row by e to the t. The first row remains the same. We have two e to the t here, and we just have an e to the t here. And then we get to multiply these two. We end up with 3 minus 2 e to the t. We have a 1 minus e to the t. We have a 6 e to the t minus 6. And we have a 3 e to the t minus 2. So I'm just doing rows by columns. In fact, this this is very similar to what we the result that we got for that for 31a because all we end up doing was replacing the the e that we had here with an e to the t, so anywhere there was an e in our result is just now an e to the t. That's not our solution quite yet. Our solution, our y, is e to the t a times y naught, our y zero, the, the two one that we have there. So we're going to take that result, which I'll go ahead and rewrite. times the vector 2, 1. So we have 2 times this plus 1 times that. That actually gives us a 5 minus 3 e to the t as our first function. Then 2 times this plus 1 times that will leave us with a 9 e to the t minus 10. So that's our solution. And that's exactly the solution that we would have gotten if we solved this one using the methods from 6.2. So, didn't necessarily gain anything by doing that, but at least we, we got the same result by doing very similar types of, of, of work. I mean, we, we saved ourselves some work here by already knowing what the, what the, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors are, but yeah. All right, let's move on to this one. Here we have a very similar type of problem. It's a two by two system. Here our matrix, our A, is going to be 2, negative 1, 4, negative 2. And our Y naught is going to be 3, 4. We go ahead and look for eigenvalues. So we subtract two we subtract lambda from the 2 and the negative 2, our diagonal elements. If we go ahead and essentially cross multiply and then work this all out we end up with just lambda squared so here we ha we ended up with a lambda squared minus 4 but then the plus 4 here got rid of it so our only eigenvalue is 0 you could even say that this lambda 1 and lambda 2 you, you could say so we're going to take our matrix A, 
We didn't have to subtract anything because lambda was zero. We do our row operations. Just going to cancel out that second row. And so we get an eigenvector. If we go ahead and pick two for our second variable, we end up with a one for our first variable. But the important thing is we only got one vector. We, we, we didn't have another way of choosing another vector other than maybe picking two times some other number and getting that number as our first, our first variable. Everything is going to be a multiple of the vector 1, 2. This matrix is defective. That does not mean that this, this initial value problem does not have a solution. We just need to compute the exponential a different way. But like the, the defective matrix that we had in the previous, the previous video, this matrix is what we call nilpotent. If we take this matrix and we multiply it to itself, it may not look like it, but it, we do get the zero matrix. You can work that out for yourself. They do get zero. So that means our exponential that we're going to get. So e to the ta is i plus ta. So notice I am replacing the a in my formula for the exponential before with t times a. So the a here becomes a t times a. We have a 1 over 2 factorial t squared a squared. So just having to distribute the square. That That's fine when we're just dealing with the, with the constant out in front. We have three, 1 over 3 factorial, we have a t cubed, a cubed, and so on and so forth. But a squared is 0, a cubed is 0, all the other ones are 0. So this is really just i plus t a. Or in other words, remember that the i is 1, 0, 0, 1, t a, we just take all the, all the elements here and multiply them by t. We'll have a 1 plus 2t, we have a negative t, we have a 4t, and we have a 1 minus 2t. So notice here, these are basically all the, all the numbers that we had from a, just multiply by t, but because of the i, we have to add a 1 here and add a 1 here. So that is our exponential for, for t of a. So our solution, our y in this case, is e to the ta times y naught, which is that matrix that we had over there. Sorry, this should be a plus. Times 3, 4. So you have 3 times 1 plus 2t minus 4 times 2. That gives us a 2t plus 3 for our first function. Then 4t times 3 plus 4 times 1 minus 2t. That gives us a 4t plus 4 as our second function. So y1 is 2t plus 3. y2 is 4t plus 4. Now this solution is very different from the solutions we got in section 6.2. We don't have any exponential functions, we don't have any sines, we don't have any cosines. Instead, all we have are t's and 1's. Technically, 1's we had before with exponentials, there's exponentials with e to the 0 times t, so those aren't, aren't new, but the t's definitely are. That's the influence of having a defective matrix on our solutions. And we couldn't have gotten this solution any other way. It's it, it or well, shouldn't say any other way. We couldn't have gotten it using the same techniques from before, because it, it's just a very different result than we could have gotten from the from the techniques in 6.2. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop here. I'm I do want to do another example, but where we take this a little bit further, but I'm going to put that in its own video. So this is, so we have one more video. That, that's what I mean. One more video, and then we're actually done for the semester. So see you then.